Hello again and welcome to another Warhammer 40k Mordian Glory video. In today's episode, we shall once more be casting our ever critical eye over the data sheets for the Imperial Guard in 10th edition Warhammer 40k. But this time, we shall be diving into the murky depths of Forge World. It's time for everyone's favourite World War I tank in space, the Malkador. This big old beast of a tank comes with a ton of firepower and is pretty durable to boot. But the big question is, can it party with the boys? Can it keep up with the tanks from the main Games Workshop Index? Or will it be destined to languish in Forge World obscurity? Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's mount up, roll out and drive right into today's episode. As it's tradition, we're going to begin with a brief overview of what the hell the Malkador actually is. Now, in the lore, it is essentially just a very old tank design that the Imperium still produces, although it has almost been completely superseded by the Lehman Russ Battle Tank as the standard MBT for the Guard. You tend to find that Malkadors will be found in deep, cold storage, Rax, for example, which was an armory world, had loads of the things stacked up. You might find some worlds that aren't quite as industrialized will be able to produce the simpler Malkador design. At the end of the day, it's a tank, but it's not quite as advanced as the Lehman Russ. And <laughs> Lehman Russ is considered a particularly technologically marvelous vehicle, so it does give you an idea of how simple yet rugged these things are meant to be. On the tabletop, they're Basically halfway between a Rus and a Rogal Dawn, which is not a bad place to be because both those tanks are pretty nice. Let's take a closer look at the Malkador beginning with its stat line. It's got a movement value of 10, which is pretty good. In additions gone by, it used to be woefully slow and it had like rules for being unreliable and breaking down, but they've got rid of all of that. 10 inch move is good because it allows you to keep pace with the other vehicles in your motor pool. It's toughness 11, same as the Lehman Rusk, can't complain about that. Good old T11 protects you from a lot of medium anti tank like auto cannons and bits and bobs. Save 2 plus, very welcome, very welcome indeed. I think for the majority of 8th and 9th edition, the Malkador was stuck with a 3 plus save which did limit it when the Russ ended up getting that sweet, sweet 2+. plus. So it's nice to see it's been brought into line. So, so far, with Movement 10, T11, and 2 plus save, it's pretty much a Russ. Where it starts becoming a bit of a dawn is with its 18 wounds. Nice. That is a lot of wounded that you're getting on a single vehicle. And, of course, you've got Leadership 7 and Objective Control of 5, pretty much what you'd expect from a tank of its size. And that's one thing to mention. We often don't... We talk about vehicle size in these videos, but the Malkador is bigger than a Russ. Uh, I would say that it's it's not quite as thick, as wide as a Rogal Dawn, but it's certainly quite long. So I would say it is as wide as a Russ, but longer than a Dawn. It's a slender tank, but it is big, and you will need to be aware of that if you're moving it around the battlefield. In summary, the Malkador is fast enough where it can be used aggressively and it's durable enough where it can get punched in the face. But sometimes it's not just about how much you can tank on your forehead, it's about how much you can kick the other guy in the balls. And to that end, let's have a look at the ranged weapons and general damage output of this vehicle. As standard, each Malkador comes equipped with two auto cannons in the sponsons, one heavy bolter in the hull, and a Malkador battle cannon. You can swap the two auto cannon sponsons out for two heavy bolters or two last cannons, and you can swap out the heavy bolter for an auto cannon or a last cannon. Now, here's the thing when you're picking what sponson weapons and hull weapons you want, the accoutrement, as it were, you want to be making sure all matches. So if you keep the two auto cannons in the sponsors, make sure you swap the heavy bolter out for an auto cannon in the hole. If you decide to go for las cannons, go for las cannons all round. Basically, you want triple heavy bolter, triple las cannons, or triple auto cannons. Don't be mixing and matching. 
For my money, I would sack off the heavy bolters. They're not very good in 10th edition. And I would focus on either triple last cannon if I wanted to add more anti-tank in my force, if that's where I thought I was lacking. Or if I want something that's a bit more take all comers, I would go for the triple auto cannon. Can't go wrong with a lot of damage three shots being spat out. Side note, if I could put triple las cannon and triple auto cannon on my Lehman Russes, I think my head would explode with how happy I would be. It's really badass. It's really awesome. It's a unique thing that the Malkador can do, and it's a massive point in its favor. Every single one of the weapons this thing can have is long range, and it packs a hell of a punch. But moving on, you can also take the obligatory free Hunter Killer Missile, which you're always going to take, and you can give it a Stubber or Storm Bolter, and you're always going to go for the Stubber in 10th because it's just the better weapon system all round. But what about that Malkador Battle Cannon? Well, it's Blast. It's a 48-inch range. It's D6 plus 3 shots. Ballistic Skill 4 plus. Strength 9. So one less strength than a Lever Rust Battle Cannon. AP minus 1, damage 3. Basically, it's an auto cannon. A very, very big, blasty auto cannon. And whilst that strength 9 does mean that it's not quite as good as dealing with medium armor as a Lemurus Battle Cannon, it's still a good profile. I love the new Auto Cannon profile. In 10th edition, Auto Cannons are back on top, baby. After struggling through 8th, struggling through 9th, 10th edition, Auto Cannons are back on the menu. It's that flat damage 3. And so when I've been looking at Malkadors and what loadouts I would give them. I can't help but be drawn towards the Malkador Battle Cannon with Triple Auto Cannon. Just think about that for a moment. You're putting out 12 Auto Cannon shots or its equivalent from this vehicle on average before you take into account Blast. If you start taking into account Blast, the maximum amount of shots that this thing could put out against a big blob of enemies would be six side auto cannon shots plus nine from the main gun. So that's 15. Come on, Tim, do that. And then Blast would add another four on. In an ideal circumstance, a Malkador could be putting out 19 auto cannon shots. That's, a, that's so much dagger. That's going to shred anything. Every single wound that your opponent fails is just going to rip three damage out of him. That's a dead Terminator. That's a dead Custodes. You need to get four through to blow up most vehicles. But on the other hand, I absolutely love the idea of giving this thing triple Laz Cannon. Because the Malkador Battle Cannon can cover you for your take all comers needs but when you absolutely positively have to win the armor jewel that triple last can is gonna give you the edge sometimes when you roll in for five ups with auto cannons and their equivalents you don't get the five ups sometimes you have to accept no substitutes you have to take a last cannon if you're gonna be popping tanks but wait there's more because not only does the Malkador have the Daka, it's also got extra levels of durability. It is tough as old boots. And that is thanks to its rugged reliability ability. Each time a ranged attack targets this model, worsen the armor penetration characteristic of that attack by one. For all of you 9th edition players out there, it's Armor of Contempt, baby! Yes! Oh, it's so good! <sighs> let me tell you. Let me tell you something. One of the most troll-tastic things of mid-9th edition was Lehman Russes with a 2-plus save with Armor of Contempt. The fact that now I can do this with a Malkador, which has got more toughness, a good save, more wounds, and it's got the reduced AP perfection this ability right here rugged reliability is what makes the malkador genuinely good up until this point it's just a bigger tank with some firepower right it just feels like a slightly chunkier rust but it's not doing anything overly unique it's not got a massive usp apart from the auto cannon spam which is pretty nice but you know what i'm going for here rugged reliability really steps it up because it combines with having the benefit of cover 
If someone hits you with an AP minus two weapon, your Malkador is still on a two plus save in cover. It's really good. And bear in mind, so much AP has been reduced. Those weapons that were AP2 have gone down to AP1. Those weapons that AP1 have gone down to AP nothing. Really, even if someone hits you with a Lance Cannon. If someone hits you with a Lance Cannon, the premier anti-tank weapon in the game, the go-to of most armies, you still get a 3 plus save with the Malkador. Oh, baby! It's nice. It's real nice. You guys all love the 4 plus vulnerable save from the engines here. I'm telling you now, rugged reliability plus cover, it's top. It's really, really good. However, there is unfortunately a slight catch, a little bit of a drawback, which is the points costs. Recently, with the latest Munitor and Field manual, a lot of guard armor went down in points. Specifically, that stuff that was in the GW index. Rogel Dawn came down to 260 from 285. A lot of Lehman Russes went down to like 180. You've even got things like the Vanquisher, which can be 155 points now. Mind blowing. But the Malkador didn't get a points cut. And I suspect it's because it's part of the Forge World team and they're not as Johnny on the spot when it comes to keeping the points updated. And so it's 250 points. Now, I'm not saying the Malkador isn't worth it. It is a very good vehicle. And if at some point in the future you're watching this video and it has come down in points a little bit, that's amazing. That's awesome. But right now, it's kind of, as much as I love the thing, it's hard to argue with saying, well, I'll spend 10 points more and get a Rogal Dawn. With the Rogal Dawn, I'm going to get an extra pip of toughness. With the Rogal Dawn, I'm going to get three Heavy Stubbers versus one. I'm going to get Multi Melters and a Pulverizer Cannon, which makes up for the Auto Cannons. And I get a Coaxial Auto Cannon. And I get the Oppressor Cannon, which is, is a very, very good weapon. One of the best weapons the Guard has got right now. So it's not that the Malkador is bad. It's just that it's kind of been superseded, hasn't it? Both in the lore and in the tabletop points cost. What I would say is that that rugged reliability is very good though. And that rugged reliability is better than the Rogal Dawn's ablative armor because that's one done. Whereas rugged reliability is every attack. So I do think the Malkador is good. I do think it's very drawable. But I think a lot of players are going to they're gonna go for that Dawn. And I wouldn't blame them. But if you own a Malkador, you can use it without feeling like you're tying one hand behind your back. And if you were thinking of picking one up, I think you could get one and it wouldn't just be for the rule of cool. Overall, I would describe it as a viable unit, but not necessarily the most competitive tank the guard has. I think that honor still falls with the dawn right now. But of course, all of this is just like my opinion, man. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Do you like the Malkador? Do you think that you just go for the Dawn instead? Or is there another tank that you think I should be looking at? Of course, if you've enjoyed today's video, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to never miss an episode. Would you like to know more? If so, then please consider becoming a channel member or patron. By supporting the channel, not only will you be doing your part, but you'll also be helping me create more content for your viewing pleasure and unlocking a whole host of perks. You get everything from a badge next to your name, custom emojis, but the big one is access to the Mordian Glory Discord server, an online community with almost two and a half thousand active members. It's always popping off in the MG Discord. We've got channels for army lists, hobbying, tactics, stories, and even a pretty spicy meme section as well. For all you greenhorns that wanted to see the Mordian glory hole, today is your lucky day. And joking aside, I do want to say a massive thank you to all of the current 
channel members and patreons you guys are amazing truly the lifeblood of the channel i could not do more during glory full time without the incredible and generous support of my members so thank you guys so much and last but certainly not least i want to say a personal thank you to all of my top tier patrons these are the war masters the people who have truly gone above and beyond the call of duty so a massive thank you to bomb bomb vert ken star mark panconi rj scorpion swordfish trombone john stubbs nick walsh diesel fox and august varney thank you guys from the bottom of my heart you are incredible your generosity is truly humbling and i could just say a thousand times over and over again thank you thank you thank you hope you all enjoyed today's video thank you for watching and of course as always i'll see you guys next time